Uh, aspartame is uh, an artificial sweetener, an additive, and it's a chemical. It's not a natural product. It's a chemical. The molecule is made up of three components. Two are amino acids, the so-called building blocks of protein. One is called phenylalanine, which is about 50% of the molecule, and the other is aspartic acid, which is like 40%. The other 10% is a so-called methyl ester, which is as soon as it's it swallowed, becomes free methyl alcohol, methanol, wood alcohol, which is a poison, a real poison. There were so many things wrong with the submitted data from G.D. Searle originally. Um, they had a monkey study, and in this monkey study, they were fed aspartame, and they were fed aspartame with milk. The milk, as you know, normally slows down the absorption of certain chemicals when you, when you drink milk. If you take aspirin in milk, it'll take much longer for the aspirin to go to work. Well, even though the monkeys were drinking aspartame and milk, out of the seven monkeys they had, I think one or two died and four or five had grand mal seizures. Now, these test results were not satisfactory to G.D. Searle. Uh, they weren't going to be able to show these to the FDA, saying, hey, look, aspartame, even with milk, uh, caused monkeys to have grand mal seizures. When we did our double-blind study here in this hospital, we had really a tragic situation which occurred, which I attributed directly to the aspartame. We needed volunteers. We looked at both patients, that is, people who had a history of mood disorder, and we needed some controls, that is, people without a history of mood disorder. One of the people that I used in the study was uh, the administrator for our psychiatric unit, who was a PhD psychologist. And several days into this study, he had an emergency. He had an ophthalmologic emergency. That is, he had sudden uh, bleeding in his eye, and a detachment of his retina. He had to be rushed to Cleveland for emergency surgery. His eye could not be saved. He lost the vision in one eye. At the same time, we had another participant in the study, a nurse, who also had an episode of intraocular bleeding, that is, bleeding within her eye. So we had two people who, during the course of the study, had eye emergencies. The bottom line was, oh, oh here is the most tested product, additive in history, an additive. Now, additive is important because aspartame was uh, approved as a grass, G-R-A-S, I mean, it's generally recognized as safe product. In which case, unlike drugs, it, uh, if people have reactions to it, it does not have to be reported to the FDA. And what I found was really quite frightening, and that was that, yes, there were many, many studies in the literature which did attest to aspartame safety, but they were essentially all funded by the industry, either or the uh, NutraSweet industry or the uh, diet soft drink industry. These were the individuals who sponsored, paid for the studies. There were independent studies, but virtually all of the independent studies, that is, studies which were not funded by the industry, Virtually all of them did identify one type of problem or another with aspartame. And so they got the test results they wanted by manipulating the method. This is not to say that aspartame was safe or that aspartame does not induce seizures because it does. Um, it's just to show you that the scientific data nowadays is unreliable. So how you design the study is going to have an impact on the results. And I think that many of the industry-sponsored studies were set up in such a way that the results could be predicted ahead of time and would be supportive of the safety of the product. There is no evidence at the present time that are aware of that aspartame in large amounts has a significant effect on brain chemistry. <laughs> Can we go through what exactly an excitotoxin is? Well, an excitotoxin, uh, basically what it does, it's a normal transmitter in the brain. These are chemicals that allow brain cells to communicate. Um, 
but if it's in even a minute over concentration in the brain, it causes the brain cells to become extremely excited. And they become so excited, they'll very quickly burn themselves out and die. That was one of the first observations by Dr. Olney, and he gave it the name excitotoxin. When was the first uh, time that you heard about aspartame? Was it during that investigation with the FDA? Yes, it was. I, uh, it was in 1970, and it was an interesting story. I was called by Dr. John Olney from Washington University, who I had been working with on MSG and baby food. We had started an, an examination of MSG and baby food that led to the baby food industry taking MSG out of baby food. And it was done by the Senate Nutrition Committee. I was the special counsel to the Senate uh, Select Committee on Nutrition. And they, we ran hearings on food. And one of the things we talked about was uh, MSG in baby food because it caused holes in the brains of rats that were being tested by Dr. Olney. And uh, there was Dr. Olney's hypothesis that a substantial amount of mental retardation, 95% of which is of unknown origin, that a substantial portion of that came from environmental insults, chemicals in the environment, food, air, water, and so forth. And he was testing them. And one of them was MSG, and it caused these holes in the brains of mice in his system. And ultimately, that led to having MSG taken out of baby food. He called me to say that he'd just done a study on aspartic acid, one of the primary components of NutraSweet, and it was doing the same thing as MSG. And that caused him to be quite concerned about the fact that that uh, Cyril Drug Company at the time was planning to use this as a sweetener. But now, after years of retesting this, most authorities agree there's no question that feeding MSG to animals produces this brain damage. It's not questioned any longer, it's a fact. Uh, there's even good studies that show that if you feed the pregnant animals the MSG, their offspring has impaired brain function. And when you measure the neurochemical uh, analysis of the brain of the animal, it's impaired all the way through the animal's youth up until adulthood, and they never quite recover from it. In one of the conferences which I addressed for the FDA, a few years back, uh, there was a study uh, with um, MSG, monosodium glutamate, which is another pro uh, excited toxin, it's, it's a neurotoxin problem. And I, we could not understand why with the controls it had almost the same reaction, number of reactions as the people had given it. But it turned out that one of the presumably inert components in these capsules of products with, M with MSG contained aspartame. So it really was, you know, there was something that the, even the investigators did not realize was a component of the presumed placebo. It, the central mechanism that actually produces the destruction and damage to the brain is excitotoxicity. That's pretty well agreed upon now. The frightening thing is that we're adding tons of these excitotoxins to our food either in the form of MSG or part of the aspartame molecule, uh, which is aspartic acid, which is an excitotoxin. Can, can we talk about the blood-brain barrier and, and how it breaks down? Um, like the hypoglycemia can be an example of that, and, and, and how um, excitotoxins can pass through that on occasion. Yeah, the blood-brain barrier is one of the big defenses that the industry always gives. They say, well, these things can't get through the blood-brain barrier. Uh, I did rather extensive research in this area, and what I discovered was that there are numerous conditions that we're all subjected to that cause the breakdown of the normal blood-brain barrier. Uh, number one is aging. As we age, our blood-brain barrier begins to deteriorate. It becomes porous, so that anything we eat will pass through the blood into the brain. Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, all of these diseases associated with the breakdown of the blood-brain barrier. Strokes, even silent strokes, produce a breakdown of the blood-brain barrier. Exposure to certain uh, pesticides, herbicides, will break down the blood-brain barrier. Uh, hypoglycemia will break it down. Uh, certain drugs will cause it to break down. Uh, free radical generation will cause it to break down. Well, we know m many of the diseases are caused by free radicals, like diabetes, you can have very high free, level, uh, uh, free radical levels. Extreme exercise, you produce a lot of free radicals. All of this breaks down the blood-brain barrier multiple sclerosis, autoimmune diseases, lupus, all these things are associated with the breakdown of the blood-brain barrier. So we know there are millions and millions of people out there who have, at one time or another, a very porous blood-brain barrier. So when they drink a diet cola or they eat MSG, it passes right into their brain very easily. The other thing that we discovered was that even if you had a completely normal intact blood-brain barrier, 
if you expose that person to a high dose of these excitotoxins over a prolonged period of time, it will seep past the barrier into the brain. Mm 